Good morning, dear brethren. God bless you. Welcome one more day to this devotional that has the objective of helping us to start the day with the Lord. To all of you, I give you the greatest welcome. I know that some of you are driving, going to your work, and some of you are going on the bus or in the colectivos, like they call it in other countries, and other ones have not even gotten out of bed, and others have their mate in their hand or their cup of coffee. Wherever you are, to all of you, may the Lord bless you and welcome to this devotion that we are going to be uh, uh, basing it in the second book of Samuel, chapter 6. It is a story where we're going to reflect on and trying to extract some very important things that can help us a lot uh, to live uh, lives victoriously. Just keeping in our in our in our hair hearts and our minds the the things of the Lord. Story is in chapter six. He says that that uh, David uh, tried one first time to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, and it went wrong. Everyone knows the the story that they tried to take the the Ark of the uh, Jerusalem near the palace where the King David lived at that moment on a very in, in, imperfect way and the Lord did not bless that first intent and somebody died because they did something they they weren't supposed to do so they take it to the house of a guy named Obed Edom and then they tell David that God has blessed the, the everything that Obed Edom because he had the, the Ark of the Covenant in his house that it was the furniture that at that time represented the presence of God. When David learned that the house of Obed-Edom was blessed, then he makes a second intent to bring the Ark of the Covenant to, uh, closer to him in the city of Jerusalem. So it says that it was David that went bring up the Ark of the Covenant from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. When a leaning effort, David was dan dancing. I'm reading chapter um, 6, verse 14. Wearing a leaning effort, David was dancing before the Lord with all of his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw the King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in, his, in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in the place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and full fellowship offerings before the Lord. Verse 18. I continue to read. After he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of Israelites, both men and women. And all the people went to their homes. When David returned home to bless his household, Michael daughter of Saul came out to meet him and said how the king of Israel has distinguished himself going around half naked in full view of the slave girls of the servants as any vulgar fellow would David that is a great welcoming that she gave him well verse 21 says that David said to my meek Michael it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father and any one from your house, when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people Israel, I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this, and I will be more humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slaves girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. And Michael, daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death, uh, at least with David. What terrible it is when we don't understand what others do, led by the Lord, 
inspired by him and we criticize and we question those things For, by those lands we have a, a, a phrase it says they don't eat or they don't let anyone eat either we have to be very careful at the time to uh, judge at the, at the time to have an opinion about something that maybe God is doing in which you are not totally in agreement with or you don't understand it but it doesn't Uh, it doesn't stop being what God wants. We can be surprised today the, by the Lord, or are we going to have an attitude that of contempt, of pride, of arrogance, as we already know and understand everything? Can the Lord surprise us today? I am not saying with things that are unbiblical, because that wouldn't be from God. But the, can the Lord break all structures, the spirit of religiosity that unfortunately camps at ease in many Christian environments? Can uh, the, the believer truly praise the Lord with freedom as he did, as David did? And for example, it appears in the book of Psalms, the amount of times that, that you can express your gratitude or a praise to the Lord. Or on the contrary, have we put God, if we may say, in a box and we don't let him act like he would like to act? David, with all his heart, danced in front of the Lord because it was a special day in his life. That day marked an out before and after for the country and in his life also. Because at last, after so many years and so many decades, where the Ark of the Covenant had lost practically its value for men, David understood that he needed to have God near his home and his life. As we have to understand right now, that we have, like never before, to have God on our side, to refuge, to take refuge, to cry to him, not to, tr not to trust in our own strength, in our experiences, not even we have to have faith in our own faith. Jesus said, our Lord Jesus Christ taught us in the Gospels that apart from him, we can do nothing. The king, before uh, David, it was the, the father of My Michael, it was uh, King Saul. Apart from being disobedient, that always wanted to do things his way, and when he uh, uh, sinned, he always tried to justify or blame somebody else. The, the worst mistake he had was not to seek God. And he had a lot of opportunities to look for God. The worst mistake of his life is that he was never a spiritual man and he didn't want to be. And the worst mistake that we can make today ourselves is to believe that we're superior to other people, to depend on ourselves, to depend on our wisdom, on our eloquence, of our charisma if we have it. And forgetting that it is not because of our merits that the blessings of God comes. It is by the mercy and for the grace of God that we can continue to see His glory and experience His presence and His love every day in our lives. We do not trust in ourselves. Saul ended up taking his own life. Saul ended up searching in fortune tellers, the famous Endor, the, the answer that God has not given him for a long time. In whom do you take refuge when you have problems, when you're anguish, when you have debts that you cannot pay? In whom do you refuge, to whom do you cry to? The Bible says in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, Cry to me, and I will answer. And I will teach you great and, re and hidden things that you do not know. Who invites us to cry? Who invites us to seek? Who invites us to, to go to him when we are worked and loaded? Our God. Our God that is alive, who understands us, that it wants to help us, that can raise wh whoever has been fallen, and that can renew the strength of those who have lost the strength, those who can come back, and he can put us in first place, and you are tired right now, and you all have, are disappointed, and you just hand the Bible somewhere else. To that God that is alive is the one that we have to cry today more than ever. David, what he did, did not do it to call attention to himself. He expressed his joy and his happiness. So immense 
inexplicable, inexplicable joy. Because do you know what it is to bring the presence of God to his life? It was something indescribable. His wife did not understand it. He says that the woman was watching him. That he, and when he arrived home, he said tremendous words. And, and just a cold jug of water. She was never a spiritual woman. And out of the abundance of the, abundance of the heart to speak, the mouth speaks. And instead of welcoming her, her husband, the privilege of being married to a, the, a, the sweet cantor of, 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 the, of, the, of Israel, he, she despises him. And she does not, does not understand what her husband has done. Because the men have not been born again, the carnal one, that may be religious, or the man who perhaps he believes, but the man who has not been born again and has not experienced the joy of salvation cannot understand when we say glory to God or amen or hallelujah or raise the hands or just dances in front of the Lord. They cannot understand that because those are silly things because it's in another dimension. My dear brethren, God wants today to manifest in our congregations and he wants to move in our homes. He wants to manifest himself in our lives. Let's not limit the Lord. He can do much more than you can imagine. And unfortunately, many in this time of confinement, in this time of trial that we're living in, all over the world, including the believers, including those who preach the gospel, the, the, shepherd, the, the pastors, the teachers, etc. In, during this time, we have to ask the Lord for renewal, a renewal of our thoughts, a renewal of of our li uh, prayer life, a renewal of our love towards Him and His work, a, re a ministerial renewal that is so much needed right now. My dear brethren and friends, let not what happened to Michael happen to us, that she does not understand and, and she doesn't want to either. That is spirit, religious spirit, that is conformed to whatever they have and they don't want any changes and they don't want the Lord to do anything new in their lives. How many congregations have accommodated to a routine, a liturgy, a religious monotony when the Lord is saying today, I want to move, I want to spill blessings over us abundantly as never before. We are surrounded by sin, we're surrounded by disorder, we're dis surrounded by negative things contrary to the Bible and to the Word of God. And in these times that we're living in, glory to God for them, the abundance, the blessing of God, the presence of the Lord has to be real in our lives and not a, an unfinished business or a message preached from the pulpit of, the, uh, of theory, but not a, a personal experience that we put into practice every day of our lives. My dear brethren and friends, let us reflect on the life of David and let us reflect of his wife. His wife missed a golden opportunity. Let's take the opportunity that God is giving us today. If today you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts towards him. Today is the acceptable day. Today is the only day that exists. Yesterday is gone and it's never going to come back. Tomorrow doesn't exist either. We don't know if it's going to happen. We, today is the day to praise the Lord, to preach His Word. Today is the word to study the Bible. Today is the, word, the day to go to the neighbor and say, God loves you. Let me pray for your family and for your situation. Today, right now, is the moment when God is giving you the opportunity to start a new day with Him, to take seriously your relationship with Him. What a real pity of a woman, just like her father, All facade, all appearances, very beautiful, but attractive. But spiritually, she was dead. She was dry. But David did not let her intimidate him. And he did not shrink himself. He was not like Achab that he put in the, in the hands of Jezebel. And then at the end, she was the one governing the, the government, the, the country, and ended up in ruins. God was not going to let anyone, whether he was his brother, sister, wife, whatever, he was going to let anyone, uh, we shouldn't allow anyone that despises the things of the Lord to enter in the game of somebody to get along with everybody. It is totally impossible to get along with everybody, to be nice to everybody. It is impossible. Even Jesus Christ had his enemies that we're always trying to find the way around to knock him down, what he did, what he said. 
Our objective is not to please men. I'm not saying that we underestimate men or we undervalue them, but I'm saying that our goal is to please God, to have our clear conscience. And if someone does not understand why we serve God, if someone does not understand why we praise the Lord, if somebody doesn't understand why we continue to talk about the Bible 2,000 years later after his birth and resurrection, God bless them, but we're going to move forward in the name of Jesus. There is a lot of people like Michael. The spirit of Michael is alive, and he's trying to get a hold of going into the lives of many and to uh, just not, not eating or letting anybody in. They're not in the movement of God or letting somebody to, to get something else more of God. But let's pray today, this morning, that the Lord continues to renew us, that we do not get stagnant, that we're not Christian full of theories, of plans, of good intentions. Look, brethren, plans, good intentions, it's all good. But if everything we do not practice and reality, This is of no use. Why do you want to say you want to uh, serve the Lord, but you're not taking it seriously? One day I'm going to read the Bible. Someday I'll go to church that I'm being invited. And sometimes and we never do. And if you don't do it ever, don't, it's not going to be worth it. Don't, stop wasting your time and making promises that was things that you're not going to fulfill. And take seriously your relationship with God. Whether you're a singer, a pastor, an athlete, a politician, everyone more than ever need to get into the move of God. To find out what is it that God wants to do through our lives during this time. Not wasting our time to look here or there, imitating that one or that one, going this place or the other, so that somebody pray for me and receive what you could have received a long time ago. If you would have taken seriously your relationship with the Lord, you would have gone within your room and in closed doors, your Father will be blessed you in public. But how many times we believe that the blessings of others will reach us? or that they'll, they lay hands on us and lay us and they pray over us, it's like a transfer, a spiritual transfer. Let's just leave those stories on those childish things. That doesn't go. That is not possible. The gospel of God is to bend your knees, is to preach, is to suffer, is, is to cry. The gospel is to work for the Lord. Just taking at whatever you want because the results are not important because what the Lord tells you with or without results or without applauses. If you are in the will of God, rejoice in Him, in the big, in the, in the little. When you have more, when you have little, and the Lord will do. And he, the Lord will honor those who bless, will bless Him. Those men and women that are not my cup, Michael, that sees from the window what God is doing in the lives of other people. Let's pray this morning to our God. And let's ask His blessing, my dear brethren. Blessed be the name of your dear name, Lord, my dear beloved God. Thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. Thank you for all the hearts that you're touching. Thank you because you have really with open mouth surprised every day to see rains and rains of blessings that are not stopping over your, your people. Bless those that are lukewarm, those who are cold, those who have gone astray, those who are not are preaching without any desire, without any effort. God is doing a genuine work in our lives that we can move, the, we can see the move of your, of your power. Thank you for this new life that you're giving us. Lord, we put our lives in your hands and we ask your blessings and we trust in you fully. In the name of your beloved Son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Glory to God, my dear brother. And may the Lord bless you very richly. We start from now to answer the calls, to answer messages, and spend all day in front line serving the Lord with the strength and with the grace that He gives us. May the Lord bless you. Take care of you, those driving on the highway. Do not take your gaze off the road. From the steering wheel, do not get distracted. Those who have not gotten up yet, remember that the Lord blesses those who, who strive, those who are in the ministry or those who were in the ministry before and they abandon it. The, the workers are few. 
We need men and women that take seriously the relationship with the Lord, and they do not care what others say, but that their goal is to please God and fulfill His will. May the Lord bless you. I send greetings to all of you, and we'll see you, if may the Lord willing, tomorrow morning to continue sharing the word of the Lord. Blessings for all.